Human chloride is a type castle steel. Nitrogen and molybdenum and the resistance to pitting corrosion in austenitic stainless steels. The steel to resist pitting corrosion is quantified on a relative scale by the pitting resistance equivalence number. This number is determined by the weight percent content of chromium, molybdenum, and nitrogen in the steel's composition. At a conference in 1983, Koji Hashimoto offered a tongue-in-cheek explanation as to the role molybdenum played in resisting pitting corrosion in steels. Using illustrations from his wife, Hashimoto described how brother chromiums formed a defensive barrier on the outside of the steel to ward off devil chlorides. However, sometimes devil will come in and take a younger brother chloride, leaving the steel open to attack. He went on to describe how mother molybdenum would take a baby chromium to the surface and keep him safe, defending him from the de devil chlorides until he was ready to link arms with his brothers once again and defend the steel. Using his work as inspiration, I sought to offer a more complete explanation on the roles of both molybdenum and nitrogen in the resistance of pitting corrosion in stainless steels. In a place long since lost to time, there was a grand fortress named Castle Steel. Castle Steel was surrounded by water, and Castle Steel was run by a father ferrite, king of the land. But alas, a king is nothing without his subjects, and so he kept his nobleman Nickel and his loyal manservant Manganese close at hand at all times. A virile man, Iron took the lovely maiden Molybdenum to be his lawfully wedded wife. Together, Iron and Molybdenum had many chromium children. When the chromium children became of age, they took oxygen wives and manned the ramparts of the castle, forming a defensive line against enemies that lay unseen. In between Father Iron's friends, the newborn chromium children, and the married chromium children that just wouldn't move out, Mother Molly needed some help. So she hired a nanny nitrogen. Alas, no man can amass the power of Father Iron without also amassing enemies. And demon chlorides stalked the outskirts of the castle, waiting for a chance to attack. Chromium and their oxygen wives formed an effective defensive barrier against the demon's chlorides, but this work was boring and tedious, and days passed, Chromium longed for adventure. One summer, in the midst of a heat wave, Cousin Carbon decided to drop by Castle Steel. Cousin Carbon is a delinquent scoundrel, and has long been the subject of the envy of all the chromium children of Castle Steel. Allured by the promise of adventure, uh, an elder chromium leaves his post and his wife at the defensive barrier. Without her husband there, the oxygen is left vulnerable to attack, and so she takes refuge somewhere else. Seeing this opportunity, a demon chloride immediately approaches Castle Steel to begin an attack. The demon chloride sends forth his horde of hydrogen harlots, who began attacking the surface of Castle Steel, slowly breaking through the walls. With the men rendered useless by the onslaught of these bucks and beauties, it's, the defense of Castle Steel is left to the women. Mother Molly quickly snaps into action, taking the nearest chromium child to the site of attack and raising him to be a warrior. Meanwhile, Nanny Nitrogen calls out to the hydrogen harlots. Although she is old, Nanny Nitrogen is a worldly woman and her experience intrigues the hydrogen harlots. Nanny Nitrogen captivates the harlots with her tales of life and love, while Mother Molly raises Chromium to be a full-grown man. Mother Molly helps him find an oxygen wife of his own, and together they re-establish the defensive perimeter of Castle Steel. Having learned much from Nanny Nitrogen, the hydrogen harlots leave Castle Steel, ending their attack. With his plot foiled, the demon chloride leaves Castle Steel, intending to strike another day and all order is restored. Again, I'd like to give special acknowledgement to Koji Yashimoto and his wife for the inspiration.